Okay, today is September 9th, 2013. I am uh, heading up into Salt Lake City, downtown Salt Lake, today. I'm uh, dressed not work attire. It's a little bit nicer business dress attire. Uh, for what could very well turn out to be a very important day in my life. This is something that I have uh, not been able to share publicly since it happened uh, back in 2009, February 9th, 2009 to be exact, about 11.30 at night. I uh, was out doing what I do all the time, repossessing. At that time, I was using my DVR sunglasses to do most of my video recording and had found a really good way to get night video of my repos because there was not, uh, I just, you know, was new in the video process still at that time. If you look back at my uh, YouTube channel, I barely had anything uploaded February 9th, 2009. It was still something that was in its infancy for me as a person and part of my business. It was still an idea that I was toying with, and that particular night had decided to not uh, be recording like I had many nights. Um, I was doing mostly day recordings at that time and just testing out the DVR sunglasses and the different technology and, and the video quality. And I, you know, I've probably got a couple thousand videos off those DVR sunglasses that I've never posted to YouTube. Uh, but I still have archives. And uh, this particular night, I decided to not have my DVR sunglasses on or going, um, which has turned out to be a costly mistake for me. As a matter of fact, it was shortly after this incident that... Uh, video of every repo became critical. Uh, this particular incident that I'm talking about was a changing time in my life uh, in many ways. But uh, I was out uh, on a repo, <clears throat> can't say for who, I was on a uh, white Chevy 2500, newer body style, and uh, the guy owned a business in a particular town, uh, and I had information that he might be at his place of employment late at night working. Uh, we'd heard some rumors about, uh, well, I can't go into any of those details because I may, may give away who this person is and I absolutely can't do that ever, according to my attorney. So anyhow, I uh, pulled up to his place of employment, did not see the truck, pulled around behind, found a back alleyway that went down behind it, a little one-way narrow, alleyway that two cars couldn't even pass each other in. And again, this is February in Utah, so there was ice on the ground. Uh, spotted the truck, backed in right up against his business door. So being rear-wheel drive, I couldn't just hook it and roll. I had to pull past the truck. I backed up to it. I hooked it from the front, lifted it in the air, got out, strapped it down, noticed as I got out that I was walking on very slippery ice. So, uh, after getting it strapped down, came walking back around my truck. And what I did is got into the truck, pulled forward, dragged the truck out, which had slid real easy on the ice, stopped. Now I was pointed full straight. And what I was going to do next is I was going to get out of my truck, take the straps off, lower the truck, go around the block and back down the alleyway because, again, I couldn't go around the truck, hook it from the rear, restrap it, and drive away my plan. Got the truck pulled out of the spot, stepped out of my truck, noticed a rather large man coming around the truck and said, are you so-and-so, identifying him by his name. He did not say anything to me, continued walking towards the driver door of the truck. I stepped in front of the driver door and was about to say again, are you so-and-so, we are here repossessing this for such and such company. And as I started to speak, before I even got the words out of my mouth, he came up with one hand. I think he was trying to hit me in the chest, but his hand came up, caught me in the jaw. He hit me so hard that he actually left the fingernail marks in my forehead. And my head went back with a hard snap, and he pretty much threw me back with one hand. Uh, later, I found out the guy weighs 265 pounds, so he outweighed me, outsized me. I also found out that he was a... Uh, ex-undercover narcotics cop for 
23 years with a local police department, which I won't say which one, but he was now retired and running his business. So he had the uh, skills and expertise to uh, catch me off guard. Um, I mean, it was, it was just blindsided me. Like, you have no idea I've been blindsided before. I mean, it sticks in my mind on every repo I go on uh, since that day. I've had a, a few occasions like that in my career where I've been caught off guard. There was another one I'll tell you about sometime where I caught a shovel to the back of the head while I was down bidding a boat. Uh, and a neighbor saw me out creeping around and uh, claimed to the cops that he thought I was stealing a boat and uh, clocked me one, split the back of my head open. I got a nice scar on the back of my head from that. Anyways, I've had my brushes with death, but this particular night was probably one of the closest I've ever come, even closer than having a gun pulled on me. Because then what this idiot did was after I hit the ground, he jumped in the cab of his truck uh, he had a little key fob clicker, so he had unlocked the door. He timed it just right to where I couldn't get in the truck. He was able to knock me to the ground, unlock it with the click of a button, jump in in one sw swoop, and lock, hit the locks. I mean, I hit the ground, and immediately, I think I sprung back up off the ground and was at his window, and the door was locked that fast. This guy started the truck, hit the four-wheel drive button on the, on the dashboard. I saw him do that. I banged on the window and said, okay, I see what you're about to do. Let me lower my, your truck down and take the straps off because you're going you're gonna to really cause a lot of damage here to your truck and potentially my truck. And he said, F you, flipped me off, dropped it into reverse and started spinning his tires. As I saw what was about to happen, his wheels were turned like this and he was strapped to my truck. I immediately and distinct, instinctively knew what was about to happen, and I started to back away from his truck, and before I knew what happened, my straps gave way, and, he, and they didn't give way at the same time. One gave, and then he pulled out of the other one, because when I came to, one strap was still strapped to my lift, and the other one was broken. And so I was able to put together later what happened. But anyways, he lunged, again, the front of his truck is off the ground two feet, three feet, and he came off and at an angle, and his truck literally smacked my body, his front fender, and threw me back. Had I not been thrown back, but instead been sucked under, I probably would have been crushed and killed by his truck. It's as close as I ever want to come to dying on this job, and it's one of the, it'd, be, it'd be a way like that that I would never foresee that it would happen. And uh, I actually know someone that has died by being crushed by a vehicle that rolled off of a flatbed that was left in neutral, and the guy was behind it and it rolled over and he killed him. Uh, one of the one of the repo men that I know that's died over the years. That's how he died, and I've thought about that many times since that day. Um, again, I don't know when I'm going to be able to air this footage. It will not be able to go on to YouTube until after this meeting today, which is now. Four years and seven months later to the day. Today is September 9th, 2013. And the reason I'm mentioning that and the numbers particularly is because numbers mean a lot to me. And the number 11 has been something my entire life. I've been one of those people that sees the number 1111 all the time. If you Google it, you'll find that there's a whole culture out there behind it. And I don't follow the culture or believe in the religious side of it or any of that kind of stuff, I've just always seen the number 1111 and the number 11 by itself throughout my entire life and considered it to be a, call it an omen or whatever. I'm not really a superstitious person, but I am a mathematical person and I think that numbers mean things in this life. Uh, math is very, very important. I was born to a, uh, my father was a physics professor my entire life growing up. He taught physics and taught numbers and numbers were very, you know, I, I grew up in a very scientific environment. I think that has a lot to do with why I'm a huge believer in numbers, but I'm not an astrological person and I'm not a horoscope person uh, per se, but I am you know, open to all of those things and, and what they could possibly mean. But I do absolutely believe that numbers, there's, there's information in numbers. There's always been information in numbers in my line of work, bin numbers, license plate numbers, uh, year makes and models, the year's numbers, uh, model numbers, you know, numbers mean things in our lives, we, we as human beings associate numbers to them, and I find it interesting that it's four years and seven months to the day 
that I'm heading up here to resolve this case. We're going before uh, an arbitration, uh, not a judge. We're not in a court of law yet. This could, we could very well go up there. We could not come to an agreement, and this will continue on to a trial jury, and, and there will be another date. But according to my attorney, he believes that we're going to have a settlement today in this case. Uh, my insurance denied the claim because they said I was outside the vehicle, outside my vehicle at the time that I was operating the lift and stuff. His insurance denied the claim because they're saying that it never happened, even though I since then have had back surgery uh, to my lower spine to release fluid to, to fix an injury that was caused because of this incident. Uh, I lived with it until uh, just recently. I, you guys saw me have back surgery this year. That's what the back surgery was for, and I couldn't say what it was for. And I'm telling you now, it was because of this incident, and I can document that before that date, I had no back injuries whatsoever. I've been in this industry 27 some odd years, and 18 of them I worked for other people and was in a couple of lawsuits where we came out on the winning side and I had to testify and was involved in the situation. And since I've owned my own business since 2003, I have been in a number of situations where I very easily could have sued somebody for what they did and the actions they took. And I chose not to because I just figured it's the bumps and bruises you get. Them to, you know, I'm putting myself into this line of work. And if you can't take a shot to the jaw, don't become a repo man. You know, it's just how it goes. But this is beyond that. This was this blatant abuse of, 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 of humanity and his his psychological effect and uh, you know we, been, we found out later on that he was going through financial trouble personal you know relationship trouble like you wouldn't believe I mean this guy was off his rocker that night and that's understandable to that degree but um, and plus the fact that I had repossessed this truck once before and uh, got him good basically uh, again I'm not going into the details of what that repo was because it is posted online somewhere in my channel and uh, I, I, I got the guy good and so he had a reason to have vendetta against me or any other repo man that would ever come for that truck again and uh, he was going to make sure that night that he absolutely did not lose that truck at, at any cost even if it was human life cost um, he's you know stuck to the story that he just got into his truck and drove away and there never was a repo going on. He never interacted with me. I mean, this guy flat out has lied uh, to the cops. You know, the cops, you know, contacted him. Uh, the cops that came that night that I called after the incident uh, and an ambulance came, they, you know, looked at me. I, I denied medical attention going to the hospital because I thought, you know, I'm, I'm okay. You know, a couple scratches to my head. They took pictures of it. They took pictures of the damage to my truck. There was physical evidence of what had happened. It happened. My story meshed, his didn't. And in the police report, he admitted initially lying to the police officers and said he did it for whatever reasons and stuff and admits guilt and admits lying, which anybody knows that if you're lying, it's because you're trying to cover something up. And, you know, I've always felt really strongly that this case would be a very good, solid case if it went to trial. But uh, we're here we are pulling into downtown Salt Lake and uh, for an arbitration meeting. And that is what happened. That is the absolute truth of what happened. And uh, hopefully this guy's insurance is going to pay out uh, for my losses over the years. Uh, because I have, my, my health has been diminished because of it. I've uh, had to sell off a couple of my trucks and, uh, you know, downsize. I had to get rid of my yard because I couldn't afford it anymore. Uh, a number of things have happened to me over the years. I lost a few clients because I was not able to keep up with the load that they were sending me. And my business and, and, and personal life have absolutely been directly affected since the day this incident happened. And again, I'm no pussy. I, I, can, I can take a blow. You know, I took a blow that night. But there's a point when you've got to make someone pay for their mistakes. Um, or... You know, we all carry insurance for a reason, and there's a time when you need to be recompensated for losses in your life, and this is the one and only time I have ever uh, sued somebody and asked for uh, uh, that compensation. And so, we shall see how it goes. I'm obviously not going to be able to get video footage of what happens inside the closed doors. I wish I could get all the arbitration, what he says, what I say, 
all that stuff. All I'm going to be able to do is paraphrase what happened. Downtown Salt Lake right now, and I'm almost to the meeting, so I'm going to cut it off here. There's so many things that have happened in my life that I've never been able to share. This is just one of them.